It's Sunday, January 16th, 2011, and you're watching This Week in Linux News. All right, let's start things off with some distro release milestones that happened this week. Last Saturday, Bode Linux hit their beta release. If you're not familiar with Bode Linux, it is basically Ubuntu with E17 Enlightenment desktop on top of it. From the looks of the screenshots on their website, they've made quite a few changes to the installer and the first time run when you first start up the operating system, it actually gives you a choice of what sort of a theme you want for your system. In other distro release news, Chakra GNU Linux, the distro that used to be based on Arch Linux, had two milestones this week, version 0.3.1 final released and version 0.4 alpha 3 released. Again, if you're not familiar with it, Chakra GNU Linux used to be based on Arch Linux. They finally went ahead and created their own base though, based off of that. And the whole point of it is to have a modularized, small KDE-based distro that is sort of like Arch Linux in the way that you install packages. Also this week, Debian version 6's release candidate installer is now available. This newer installer comes with support for ButterFS and EXT4, and it also makes partitioning the drive just a little bit easier. And finally, Frugalware 1.4's release candidate is now available. Frugalware is a Slackware-based distribution that has Pac-Man on top of it, so it's sort of like Arch Linux, sort of like Slackware, all at the same time. And one last distro to mention, even though they didn't have a release this week, Magia Linux, the distro that spun off of Mandrake Linux, Mandriva Linux, whatever it is that they are at this point. According to their blog, they are still on schedule to have an alpha release this month. They say not to expect too much out of it because again, it is an alpha, but if you're interested in Mandriva and where things were going with that, this is the fork that has split off from it, so if you want to try it out, hopefully we will be able to in the next couple of weeks. In some decently large Linux news this week, Broadcom has joined the Linux Foundation. As it turns out, when they released the wireless end drivers as open source a few months back, it was sort of a strategic move to help integrate themselves a little better into the Linux community, remove some of that stigma they've had for so long. And now that they're joining the Linux Foundation, hopefully they'll be taking that step one step further and releasing more drivers, making things even easier for people to keep using their products on Linux. And now moving on to some evil overlord type Linux news. This week an exhibition type match was played on Jeopardy with Watson, IBM's newest deep QA based computer, and the top two Jeopardy contestants of all time. Now it turned out to be quite a close match. Watson ended up beating out Ken Jennings $4,400 to $3,400 and it could not have been done without the software behind it, the ability to understand some human language input, and the entire thing was, of course, running on Linux. And in a bit of confusing news, Google has announced that they're going to be removing H.264 support from Chrome. They say that it's an effort to help promote open web standards, but at the same time, just a little while back, didn't they include Flash into Chrome by default? I don't honestly have an opinion one way or another about it. WebM being an open standard, it is very nice to see them moving that direction and pushing people in that direction. But at the same time, if they're going to be pushing Flash, I, I don't know, I'm still confused. What do you guys think about the move to remove H.264? Do you think it's a good one, a bad one? How do you think it's going to affect the open web standards in general? Let me know in the comment section below. And moving on to some other licensing type news, after it's been out there for months and months, VLC for iOS has been pulled from Apple's App Store. If you weren't aware of it, there was a bit of a conflict regarding the DRM required to get the applications into Apple's App Store and how it would conflict with the GPL. Well, effective January 7th, which as it turns out is not this week, a letter was sent to the VLC developers, the ones who developed the iOS application, saying that they had to pull it down because of the licensing restrictions. So I have to say it's a little bit sad to see an open source application being pulled from those places, and I'm curious if there are any other ones out there that are going to be pulled due to the GPL restrictions. Luckily, it does not appear to be a problem for the Android app market because there's no DRM involved, so if VLC does end up coming to the Android marketplace, there shouldn't be any issues. All right, let's move on to some software release, software update type news. This week, Shotwell, the digital photo manager for GNOME, got an update to 0.8.1. With this release comes support for raw images from Samsung digital SLR cameras, the SRW format, as well as support for 3GP video files, which you'll find a lot of cell phones using, like my Droid X that I just got. I will say I haven't used Shotwell in a very long time, but I do look forward to trying out 0.8.1. If you have used it, let me know what you think of it in the comments. 
In addition, this week, the OpenOffice fork LibreOffice released their release Candidate 3. This has several bug fixes and some patches regarding Ubuntu 10.10. They've changed the branding around a little bit and fixed a few translations. There is a PPA available for Ubuntu at this point. So if you'd like to try it out, go ahead and add the PPA to your system and download it. I'll have a link to how to do all of that in the source code below. In addition, Ubuntu Tweak version 0.5.10 released this week with a couple of interesting features, including the ability to disable broken software sources and give users the easy option to fix them. And they added a setting to it to allow the launcher in Unity to auto-hide for 11.04. So if you haven't tried out Ubuntu Tweak before and you're interested in it, if you're on Ubuntu, it is definitely a highly recommended application. I'll have a link to how you can install it in the source code. And in the last bit of real Ubuntu-related news, Canonical is going to be creating a 2D version of Unity for Ubuntu 11.04. From the articles that I've read, they're going to be doing the implementation in Qt and QML, which is kind of moving away from the whole GNOME backend. However, to have something to fall back on just in case your hardware doesn't support the 3D out of the box, it is very nice to see that if their people are going to be moving to Unity, they will have that option to use the interface, even if they don't have the hardware that supports it. In addition, according to OMG Ubuntu, there is already a PPA available for this new 2D version of Unity for Ubuntu 10.10 and 11.04. Again, if you would like to try that out, there will be a link to OMG Ubuntu's post in the source code below. And now sort of bridging the gap between the Ubuntu and Android news, a developer named Steve Troughton Smith has announced he managed to get Ubuntu and Migo running on his Nexus S device. Now reading over the post, he did not do this in the way that a lot of the tablets are doing it, where you run a script that starts it up inside of Android. This is a true dual boot situation. They're both still very, very early ports, but he gives a couple of instructions on how to do it. If you are into more advanced things and into testing on the Nexus S, you can definitely try that out yourself. To be honest, it's just kind of nice to see Migo running on an actual device. And to wrap things up, let's talk about all of the Android news. Andy Rubin, the Google engineer who demoed the Motorola Zoom at the Google event a little while back, has announced the next version of Android is going to be called Ice Cream Sandwich, moving away from the more obvious ice cream that you would expect, and the more silly insulin that a lot of people would expect. A lot of the articles I read about it suggest that Ice Cream Sandwich might be the version of Honeycomb intended for phones, since Honeycomb is only intended for tablets. I will say I'm looking forward to seeing new features and newer versions of Android, but it would be really nice to get them on the older devices as well. Now let's talk about a couple of Android apps. Newegg officially announced their Android app this week, even though it's apparently been out for three weeks at this point. They released a small update to it, doing some bug fixes, some performance tweaks, things like that. So if you've ever wanted to shop on Newegg while you're out and about on your Android device, you can definitely do that now. In addition, Google released an updated version of their Google Translate app for Android. I have to say there's a very cool feature to it that's still really, really early in development. That feature is called Conversation Mode. So basically you take your device, you run the Google Translate application, you hit the voice command button, and then when it gives you the moment, you say, hello. It will translate it into Spanish for you and give you a little option there at the bottom that says, enter Conversation Mode. And now that you're in Conversation Mode, you can hit Respond in Spanish, you can go back and forth with someone who speaks Spanish. It is just one step closer to having a universal translator, which would be extremely, extremely cool. So if you haven't tried out the Google Translate app and you have a Spanish-speaking friend that you would like to converse with, definitely give it a shot on your Android-based device. And to wrap things up, this might be slightly old news since it's technically data from November, but it appears that Android has eked out iPhone for the number two slot in the US. As of November 2010, Android is taking up 26% of the US smartphone market where Apple's iPhone OS, iOS, has 25%. Both of them, however, are still falling behind RIM, which still has 33% of the market, though it did take a 4% market share loss between August and November. Either way, it's very cool to see a Linux-based operating system moving really high up the market trends here in the US. And with all the new versions of it coming out, I can guarantee that that number is just going to continue to rise over the next year or into the future beyond that. But that's all I've got for you today. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't seen it already, I started a music channel. I'm going to keep plugging it. Sorry, guys. It's youtube.com slash twillplays. I've only got one video out there so far, but I am working on the next one and the next one. As always, though, thank you so much for watching. I hope you had a wonderful weekend, and I will talk to you again very soon.